Embedded developer might face problems with limited resources, especially memory, to work with big chunk of data that are actually whether local or remote from sensors or cloud storage accounts. Uh, today on the IoT show, we have Marcos and Dane from the device SDK team in the Azure IT Group will tell us how they're solving the problem with a library of theirs. <music> This is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today with Marcos and Dane from the Device SDK team in the Azure IoT Group, we'll talk about MicroStream. Guys, thanks for joining the show today. Thank yeah. you. So a little bit uh, about yourself, guys. Marcos, who are you? So I, I'm a software developer engineer on the uh, IoT team on the device side. Okay. Dane. Yeah, same. So I'm also on the uh, SDK team for C. Awesome. So you guys are the ones helping the embedded developers making their stuff and their devices connected uh, to, to the cloud, to Azure, and to IT Hub and IT Central, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Exactly. So you guys came up along all the things that you guys are doing uh, with a library that will help embedded developers, you know, have a easier life. So tell me a bit about MicroStream, what that is, and sure. you know what context you created that. Yeah. So uh, basically, the, the problem that we tried to address was created uh, by the fact that we're going to have device connect to the cloud, uh, and now it needs a lot of data, mm -hmm. and you need to transfer it over the cloud. And uh, basically, you can have a file that you want to trans transfer it over the cloud, mm -hmm. or you can have a camera and you have uh, the image that you want to upload to okay. the cloud and stuff like that. Um, the problem now is if you have a big device, you can just bring these uh, to the memory and use it from there. Okay. But in a tiny device, in a Cortex M microcontroller, for mm -hmm. example, uh, you probably don't have this memory. Yeah, that's something uh, that like regular like web developers or ours, they, they yeah. have no clue about. But like when you do embedded development, you are running on limited resources. Yeah, right? exactly. So you need to transfer a mag of uh, data, mm -hmm. and you have a uh, two kilobytes of run to do that. Oops. So yeah, <laughs> it's a problem. Uh, what you can do is uh, you can create an adapter layer on mm -hmm. top of the TCP, for example, to okay. understand the file and it will get the file chunk by chunk. Okay. But if you have a camera, now you need an adapter for the camera. Okay. And it works well, but uh, the problem, you're going to have a lot of uh, TCPs that you can use mm -hmm. and a lot of device, and it will create a huge matrix, and it will not scale at all. Okay. So the microstream come to solve this problem. Okay. It basically creates a standard interface yeah. Uh, that no matter what kind of data you have, you can expose with this interface. And you can uh, manipulate it, concatenate data, splitting data, so you can create a header for a file that mm -hmm. you're going to transfer together with an image in a camera. Yeah. And you can concatenate it all together and send to the TCP and say, transfer it. Awesome. And it will transfer chunk by chunk doing, uh, using the memory that you have. That's that's very promising, and that's all. That's all C, right? Yeah. That's all C for developers it's building CNI embedded. Line. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually working on different types of R tosses and and Windows yeah. and Linux as well, yeah. if need be. Cool. I like right. that. Dana, I think you're here for showing us or explaining what the architecture is. Yes. And then showing us some demo of that, right? Exactly. So I'll start here. Um, we have. I just have a quick PowerPoint that goes over essentially how the whole dynamic okay. works. You feel good as a developer going through PowerPoint? Yeah, it's a little bit of a struggle, <laughs> but you know, I eventually figured it out. Um, so here in this in this example, we have just a memory just. So we just okay. it's either malloc or maybe it's statically allocated at okay. compile time. Um, just an arbitrary memory address with a certain size. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to initialize a uStream with that memory address, okay. giving it a size. So mm -hmm. in this case, it populates the whole thing. You have your handle here that's labeled uStream1, okay. and you have the control block that basically mm -hmm. manages all the references to that memory address. Okay. Um, so I initialize it, and I now have a position via this uStream1. I have a position at the very first uh, address. Okay. And so if I want to read it, I pass the Ustream interface uh, a buffer that I want to yep. put the data in. I give it a size, saying, hey, give me 20 bytes, for example. Okay. So here, I pass the, the data buffer. Mm -hmm. 
I then read it and it's returned back to me and its position is then moved accordingly inside. Um, so then if, let's say, someone else wants to read the same data, but they don't want to copy it. They want to try and save memory. So mm -hmm. what you can do is you can clone this, this Ustream, which basically adds a ref count to the control block mm -hmm. and says, hey, someone else wants to use this, so increment it to two, essentially. So in this case, um, I clone. And in the clone case, it's going to put the position at the same position as the one that you cloned. So in this case, Ustream 2 is going to be at the same position as 1. And what okay. you can do at that point is you can reset it to the beginning and say, hey, I want to restart to the beginning mm -hmm. um, so I can read the whole data. Mm -hmm. And let's say then you read some more data. Uh, Ustream 1 passes another uh, chunk of data. And eventually, you get the whole thing. Okay. And at this point, you dispose of your instance, saying, hey, I'm done with it. Um, I don't need any more. So dereference, essentially, or, yep. or, inc or decrement the ref count Got to it. this Ustream. So in that case, that's disposed of. Mm -hmm. um, and let's say that the other person or the other Ustream wants to read the data. So they pass, let's say, a buffer that does the whole thing. Yeah. They get the whole thing. And after that, they should dispose of their instance. They do. Okay. And at this point, because there's no, ref there's no references to the Ustream at this point, it will also uh, free the control block. So okay. that's automatically uh, destroyed. Yep. And then the memory address, if it's malloced, would also be freed. So you have no memory leaks and there's no problems. Nice. Um, one more quick bit about the Ustream is that it's uh, there's no mallocs underneath the cover. So everything that we do is statically allocated, okay. um, which is great for embedded systems because it's deterministic and you don't have to worry about mallocing things. All of that. Um, yeah, so all the memory that's used is passed by the user, so you mm -hmm. can basically create it however you want, and then we use that under the covers and, and, and do uh, everything that's necessary. Okay. So that's basically that. Um, we can go into basically a demo. Um, okay. So I have a really basic demo here. Um, I removed a lot of the error checking, so you know, in Don't, production. That's okay. Yeah, that's in production, you should. That's a demo. Yeah, that's a demo. Um, so the things to pay attention to here are I'm basically concatenating uh, two bits of data: one that's statically allocated and one that's malloced. Okay. So it's non-continuous, um, but we're going to essentially be able to treat it as though it were. Okay. Um, so the things to pay attention to are here: uStream init. I'm initializing the first one. Okay. Um, the strings that I'm initializing are up here, so it's just going to print out "Hello World." Okay. Um, so Ustream 1 is going to have hello, and the second one is then going to have world. Um, and then here I'm going to concatenate the two, saying concatenate 2 to 1. Okay. And at the very end, uh, I have a little helper function that will basically just call one, uh, one ulib function called az ulib Ustream read, read. Okay. which will just keep returning data if there is some. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, it'll say, EOF, I have no more data for you. You can proceed on. Yep. Um, so it basically just reads until, until that point. Um, so let's see, if I go into here, uh, let's see, C, CD, master, dot slash bill, C, there we go, samples, Ustream, uh, was it sample? Okay. Yeah. So here you can see that the size of the first Ustream uh, when we started was 6. Yep. And the size of the second one was 7. We then concatenated 2, and the size is then printed as 13. Yeah, it's Hello World. Yeah. Um, at the very end, it's printed as Hello World. Yep. Um, another example that we have is you can actually create a Ustream interface for pretty much anything. So we have an example of doing it for a blob. Okay. Um, so in this case, we have this sample here. I initialize, again, kind of a basic one. Yeah. It's called BSS because it's stored in the BSS, and okay. it just says Hello. And then we have a blob, um, and I have the URL already there. Um, and here's the blob text. It just says IoT shell. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go into the blob. Uh, we're going to create a Ustream from blob, okay. passing all the necessary memory, um, the URL at the end. And then we're going to con concatenate the two and do the same thing we did last time, except okay. now it's going to have data that's just local to the device. And then you have some that's actually in the cloud. Okay. Um, so here, pardon me while I go back. Uh, blob Ustream, and then I think it's in build dot slash. What's interesting is for a C developer actually being able to invoke uh, and and use data which is actually somewhere else. Yeah, yep. is like 
holy cow, what do yeah. I have to do? I have to like create all the instances that I need for the client to yeah. the service and then all of that. But actually, you're totally abstracting all that for, for yeah. the developer. Yeah, and what's also nice is that this is, is lazily uh, received. So mm -hmm. when I create it, it doesn't actually go to the blob and get it immediately. It's only when someone reads mm -hmm. and says, hey, give me the give me the data, that it will actually do the necessary uh, oh, network okay. I.O. to get the, get to the data. Yeah. So here I have the sample. I'm going to hit enter. So you can see that uh, get size is 9, and it prints out hello I IO2 show as if it were one continuous block of memory. Awesome. So it makes it really easy. So like Marco said, if you're maybe sending some kind of HTTP request or something, yeah. you can have a header that's just, um, it stays the same. So you can mm -hmm. take that, and uh, you can then concatenate maybe your, uh, your data or your payload as another U stream, mm -hmm. and you can just keep concatenating, and you can reuse that. You can just say clone, give me that header again, yeah. and then concatenate, and just Magic. send it. Magic. Yeah, and it really is. Uh -huh. It really is. Yeah. Awesome, guys. I love it. So if, so if people actually want to access that library uh, and all the code, actually, because it's open source, right? Yes. yes. Uh, people MIT. Can, yep. People can contribute as well, I yes. guess, right? For sure. Uh, so if you guys want to learn more about it, you can go to aka.ms slash IoT show slash you leave, like micro leave. Um, thanks for watching the IoT show today. Guys, thanks a lot for coming today. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Love what you're doing. Come again with more of these uh, libraries for embedded developers. I'm sure they'll love that. Absolutely. We'll sure. love to. Okay. See you soon on the IoT show, guys.